Hola, comrades! Today's topic of interest, Skyward Sword. I'm going to defend the most divisive Zelda game ever, and not only that, I'm going to defend the most ridiculed element in that game, the repetition. This is not going to be easy, to say the least. Let's take a step back first. Way back. I mean, over a decade back. Let's go to the release of Twilight Princess. As I said in my episode on that game, it has been unfairly maligned for many of the same reasons that it was celebrated originally. Because it was sprawling, and dark, and a return to the stylings of Ocarina of Time. In fact, going even further in the realism department. They said there wasn't much in its vast world. They said it was dour and overly grim. They said it was basically a copy of Ocarina. This game was released at a strange time, too. Games were still being released for the GameCube, while the Wii, which would turn out to be extraordinarily successful, was being introduced. So Twilight Princess was released on both platforms, leaving the Wii without a Zelda game released solely for it until late in its life cycle, by which point fans had grown tired and dismissive of Twilight Princess. Now let's jump ahead to late 2011. Skyward Sword is released on the Wii. Critical reception is wildly positive, and rightly so. It's a well-told, well-crafted, surprisingly heartfelt entry that pumps the Zelda formula full of lush music, while changing it just enough to make it still feel new, and then lathering it with achingly beautiful Cezanne-inspired imagery that makes my heart sing every time I look at it. Then the general public gets their hands on it, and while most people were fans, the minority of angry fanboys who always sprinkles hate upon games that don't give them exactly what they want were incensed. This minority would be better off ignored, but the complaints they share with those who are neutral about this game should be examined. First there are the complaints about the motion controls, which admittedly are not unique to this game and extend to most games on the Wii that use motion controls. I honestly cannot think of a Wii game that uses motion controls that hasn't garnered a lot of anger from hardcore fans who prefer to sit there with a controller. But they did take the motion controls further in Skyward Sword than they did in most Wii games. The one-to-one -one sword play angers a lot of people. And yes, it does not work perfectly, but it's not terrible either. It does not impede your progress, and while I don't miss it, and I didn't like having to get a Wii Motion Plus just to play the game, I don't consider it a detriment. Then there are the complaints about the graphics, and these complaints are just absurd. To sum up what I said in my last video about Xenoblade Chronicles' graphics, realistic does not equal stunning. Just because a game has a lower pixel count does not mean it cannot be gorgeous. Now to go to the most valid complaint about the game, and the one this video is addressing. The repetitiveness. Aside from Skyloft, there are three major regions in this game. They're named after the goddesses whose names we've known since Ocarina, and they are regions we have seen in Zelda games countless times. A forest region, a fire region, and a desert region. Obviously, there are more than three dungeons in the game, so you have to revisit these regions. Less explicably, you have to revisit them again after you're done playing through all of the game's dungeons, and then you play through them again after that, and there's a fair bit of tedium involved with this. I'm not going to excuse the tedium. I'm not even going to defend the execution of these later repetitions, though the first repetitions add enough to the area that's like you're playing through an entirely separate region, albeit one that is inextricably connected with where you were before. To be honest, while I like Skyward Sword a lot, and the parts in it that I like I simply adore, this is not my favorite Zelda game, and I would rank it below both Wind Waker and Breath of the Wild. And the lack of ambition in its design, exemplified by these later repetitions, is a major reason why. However, I would like to defend the inclusion of such repetitions to discuss why, at least in concept, these repetitions are actually kind of brilliant and fitting. The Zelda series has always had a close relationship with music. This dates back to the original Legend of Zelda, but Ocarina of Time is where this trend blossomed. In The Wind Waker, 
You control the wind with a conductor's baton. In Twilight Princess, you howl notes to sync up with your fellow wolf, who transforms into the hero of time and teaches you new skills. But it is in Skyward Sword that the focus on the music is most evident. How can that be, you may ask, when the game's instrument, the harp, is one of the least interesting instruments in the entire series? Well, I could mention the orchestral bliss that is this game's score. This is the first Zelda game with a fully orchestrated score, but this isn't only done to emphasize how cinematic the game is, which is the reason that many games began to include orchestral scores in the late 2000s and early 2010s. No, it goes deeper than that. This is the first Zelda game in the timeline chronologically. The world was newer then, and the decay that would ravage the world by later games had not begun to occur. This is the reason for not only the colorful music, but also for the color and the design. And indeed, this is the most optimistic feeling Zelda game, surpassing even Wind Waker, which despite the bright palette can be bleak and cold and lonely. But that's not what I'm getting at. No, what I'm saying is this. The entire game is designed like a symphony. Each of the areas is one melody, and when they're assembled, you have the entire symphony. This also explains the repetition of the areas. Not convinced? I wouldn't expect you to be quite yet. Let's go to the most direct evidence the game offers to support my claims. The Song of the Hero. This is, secretly, the main theme of The Legend of Zelda. to collect it in four parts. The first part is given to you by Levias, but the other three parts must be sought out by meeting each of the three dragons and completing tasks for them. Yes, this is a little tedious, but it's a telling case of how music is integrated into the form of the story. To complete the Song of the Hero, and thus to become the true hero, you must go around the world and combine fragments of the songs that are in the hands of the three dragons who bear the names of significant locations in the Zelda series and who are named after the golden goddesses who created Hyrule. The dragons are named... Farron, Elden, and Laneru. This would be interesting enough by itself, but the game goes further than that. If we extrapolate from the Song of the Hero quest that the three areas can represent three different melodies, then what does it mean that the game has us keep going back to these areas? The three melodies, or four if you count Skyloft as its own area, represent the entire orchestra. Every time you must visit these areas together represents one movement of the orchestra. The first movement is to introduce the different melodies, then the second is to alter these melodies. In the second movement, you return to these areas and unlock new sections, challenge new dungeons, etc. There are recurring motifs, yes, but the experience is largely different. Even in Skyloft, there are new sections to explore that cannot be accessed without the items you found in the surface world. Then there's the third movement, which is darker and more ethereal. You return to these areas a third time and visit their silent realms. In Skyloft, you must explore the Isle of Songs to learn the melodies that need to be known to enter these silent realms. Then there's the fourth and final movement, when you return to these regions and collect fragments of a melody from their highest beings, their deities, their dragons, after already having saved Levias, the great guardian whale of the sky, from the parasite Bilokite. This is a triumphant movement, and it brings the symphony to its climax, where the three melodies collide. This is the Sky Keep, where you receive the three pieces of the Triforce. It is here that the three areas you visited throughout the game, along with Skyloft, which is where you are, combine into one, and it is the highest triumph of the game. And just like with the Song of the Hero, you, the protagonist, Link, are the one bringing the pieces together into the whole. From a structural standpoint, it's one of the most intelligent choices I've seen in a game, and the perfect choice for the first Zelda game scored by an orchestra. That there are four discernible movements, 
as has been typical of symphonies for centuries, is a nice touch as well. Music is the universal language. I'm far from the first one to say that, but it is still the truth. It connects us. And Skyward Sword, being the first game chronologically in the series, is the one where the world of Hyrule is the most connected, Decay not having set in. So how appropriate is it that this is the most musical game in the series? What I said in the video does not make the repetitiveness good exactly, but it does make it purposeful. I got the idea for this video while watching Chugga Conroy's Let's Play of Skyward Sword, which you should watch. It's a good defense of an unfairly maligned game. But even Chugga could not defend the repetition in the last third of the game. However, as I watched his playthrough, and then played through the game again myself, I thought, no, these sections are not great, but there's something interesting about them. I like what they do conceptually to the structure of the game. Having made that determination, I decided to find out why. I eventually made the connection to the idea of a symphony, and the concept for this video formulated in my head for the better part of a year before I had all the pieces in place and could write it down. The result is what I have to say is one of my favorite videos I've ever done. I hope you all enjoyed it. Anyway, if you liked what you saw today, consider donating to my Patreon so I can produce even more musical content. Also, like, comment, subscribe, all that lyrical stuff. Adios, comrades!